So once I hit run on this, it's going to start the pipeline and you can see all these numbers keep going up and you can see here in Google Sheet, we have some numbers going up as well. I can come to Google Sheet and I can see that the email addresses are getting populated in here. Hey, this is part two of doing some lead generation, but this time it's going to be a bit more intermediate to advanced level. In the first video, we looked at how to do a simple search query and then put that into DeepSeek to get a table and then automate it via make.com. But in this video, it's all about going a step further, especially if your services are localized to an area. So that's where Google Maps are going to be really, really useful. So maybe you're targeting lawyers, dentists or realtors who are actually really good clients for something like a voice agent, which is again another video that I did where we showed how 11 labs and NA10 can be used to build a voice agent for any of these customers, but to generate leads. So this is an intermediate level. And then we'll go to make.com to perform automation like scraping, filtering Google Sheet and emailing as well. So if this kind of video is of interest to you, then do subscribe to this channel and hit that like button button for this video and also comment about if you tried this workflow if it worked for you or if you had any challenges so let's get started so let me come to google maps and by the way it'll also work on bing maps so i can search for lawyers so this is target ideal customer profile that i've identified let's say for this voice agent agency and here are all the lawyer firms in New York. So what I can do now is once I have some of these results, I can copy the URL, which is over here. So all I have to do is control C and that's copied into my clipboard. And I can do the same for other clients as well. So if I want, I can search for gyms and maybe I want to get in touch with Jim to sell my AI automation or AI voice agents. I can do the same over here. And all you need is this URL where we have the search and the latitude and the longitude as well. But we don't have to worry about that. All we have to do is copy this URL. So I'll just copy this and then come back to make.com so that we are able to scrape these. And the step is going to be that we'll ask make.com to visit these websites and then get the email addresses from there. Because if I just click on one of these results, you'll see they have the phone number, they have the websites, and this is the information that we'll get. And we want to go to these websites and find out the actual email addresses that we can contact them on. Because sometimes we might not get all the email addresses in here on this Google map search result. So once we are in make.com, let's create a new scenario over here and it automatically shows the first step that we want to add and we'll call it HTTP because we want to load the Google maps results first. So we'll say make a request. So here we have, and here is the URL that I'm going to paste. And this is the one that I copied from Google maps. And we'll also say parse result is yes. Although I think in this case, we'll just have the entire document downloaded. There is no JSON to be passed, but nonetheless, we we'll hit this as yes. And this should be good. We we'll leave the method at get as well and hit save. And because this is a lengthy automation, I'll just save this so that I can save this from time to time. So I'll just call it Google map leads and then come in here and save. So I can either click right click on this and say run this module once, which will get the result for us. And we can check out what kind of results we're getting. So this this was the input data that we gave and let's check out the output that we have here. We have some data and yes, yeah, so we are getting the entire web page like we see over here. So this is the entire web page and I can keep scrolling. There's a ton of information in here. So we don't have to worry about this. We'll set up the rest of the pipeline or this automation so that we are able to parse the results from here. So now that we have this, what we want to do as a next step is actually get the only the URLs from this data that we have. So for that, we are going to use some system operators within make and the first one is called pattern so if i search for pattern there is a text parser and within that we are going to use regular expression so here is where we want to put our pattern again don't worry about this pattern too much if you search for url regex or you can even search in DeepSeek or chat gpt about this as well so you'll get something like this which is a pattern which matches the url so i'm going to say global match as yes case sensitive as no and the most important part is the text that goes into here so the text that goes into here is coming from the HTTP step and there is a variable called data. So we'll use that and that should be good. So if I hit on save, now we have the data from HTTP. Now we have the text parser here as well. So we have a few system level aggregation 
actions that we want to do before we start actually going into those websites or allowing make.com to go and make requests for that specific website. So the next step is going to be an array aggregator. So here we are going to say our source is the text parser and we are going to click on the fallback match is the one that we want to aggregate and just hit save. So let's also save this workflow. It says transformer should not be the last one. Okay, we can just save this for now. Let me just run this for a second. So it looks like it ran through it. So we made the request text parsed and let's look at the aggregator result. So we have a lot of bundles over here and we're able to see some URLs come through, although not everyone's a good match. So we have a URL here, but this is Google. So we want to ignore them. So if you click looking through the array aggregator, you'll be able to see something like this, which I just found. So this looks like it is a immigration lawyer firm. So I can just search through this or go to this website and see indeed it is a lawyer firm that we can get in touch with. So this is good. Okay, so the IRA aggregator kind of worked. So the next step is we want to loop through all the results that we got and then filter them out because as you saw, there were some URLs which contain Google and GStatic. So these are all URLs that Google uses to show the data on Google Maps. And that's of no use for us. We are only looking for lawyer firms URLs. So the next step is going to be something called as repeater. So we're saying initial value is one and the repeats should be the length of the array that we just created, which is going to come from here. And the array length is here, 1163. So I can hit on save. So if I just click on the results over here, you'll see we had 1163 bundles, which is all an array over here, 1163. And we just created a repeater so that we take all, instead of taking all of them one by one, we process each URL one at a time. And I can just copy and put this in here. And for, for now, we're going to say HTTP, but we want to filter the results as well. But for now, let's just say make a request and the URL is going to come from the array and we're going to select this. And this one is a bit tricky. So bear with me for a second. So here we have the flow control I. So if you see these parentheses that we have here, that is what an array is. And then we have the same thing over here. So all we're saying is within this array, which is right now 1163 results long, we want to take only the one that we want, which is coming from the repeater. And the repeater has an I over here. So we'll put the I in here and then fallback match we are going to take only the first result. So we'll put one here as well. Hopefully that made sense. Let me show you what I mean. So I can go back here and click on I. So this puts the I in there and then we'll put one over here because we want to get this result. So that is set up. We'll also say parse as yes and hit on save. Now here is where we want to filter all the results that we are not interested in, which is URLs that contain Google and GStatic. So I can just say set up a filter and give it a label over here. And the condition is going to be the same thing that we just did. We'll select the fallback URL over here. And in here, we'll select the array and number one over here. And if I click on this, I'll get a drop down over here. And we say it does not contain. I can say Google. I can also add another rule, which is going to be the same. I'll just copy and paste that. And even here, I'll say it does not contain G static. And if you identify a few other URLs that you think doesn't make sense to scrape, or if you understood that it was coming from Google, you can add them here as well. So I'll just hit save over here and save my entire workflow. And then sometimes this HTTP result might fail as well because not all the time we'll get a URL that is properly formatted. So what I can do is right click on this and add an error handler and I'll just say ignore. If something does fail, I'll just ignore those URLs. But if it passes, then what we want to do is add another text parser and look for existence of an email address in that web page. So similar to the pattern that we defined earlier for filtering the URLs, we'll call this global match as well and the text that we want to filter on is going to come from the previous http step and let's click on data and the pattern for matching the email address is this and we'll also say case sensitive is no and hit save so this is saved as well and then what we can do is save some of these results in the google sheet so i can say add a row again make your connection if you don't have one by clicking on add and then come to your google sheet that you've created and select this google sheet id this is the easiest method that I found to work anyways. But if you come here, you don't have to search by all. You can search by path and then you can go through the folders, etc. But I'll say search from 
all and then I'll hit the spreadsheet ID and I can give it a sheet name over here. So let me just call it sheet one and I'll just say it does not contain any header for now. Also, let me delete everything in the sheet one and for the column range, I'll just say A to Z and here we can define what goes where. So in column A, what I want is the actual URL, which is going to be this. Again, we'll follow through the same thing that we did. We'll click on the I array and also the first value and then B is where we'll put in the fallback match. So this is what we will have the email addresses because this is doing a pattern match and that should be good. If you do have a header column, you can say yes and then it'll skip that. But for now, I'll just say save on this and save this entire workflow as well. So now it's time to run this. So let's run. So I got an error over here and if I click on this, I see that there is three and length. So I'll just remove this, hit save, save the workflow again and run this again. So now it seems like it's working. So if if I zoom in here, you'll see we have a lot of errors here as well, but then we have some that pass through and then we are able to get some email addresses loaded into Google Sheets as well. So if I come to Google Sheets, you'll see that it's starting to populate. Although I see we have loads of duplicates, but that's completely fine. We can use a tool like remove duplicate rows and then be able to remove all of them. But at least you can see we are getting different email addresses that were picked up from the homepage of all these websites. So you can see here, this will run through all all the URLs and you can even see how many are getting filtered over here and it looks like it's finished running. So what you can do again is come back to your search results and move this around slightly so that these change or you can just zoom out so that the latitude and longitude change as well and put that into the URL over here and start scraping again. And to only get the unique rows in here, I can come in and search for remove duplicate rows. And for now, I'll say select all and then remove duplicates. Click OK. So it's kind of giving you all the unique rows in here. You can also say you don't want to look at the contact us page or something, but this is still really good. And then you can prepare your final list of email addresses that you've got from Google Maps. And this is again, a really easy way. So instead of spending hours trying to go through each of these websites, you are able to automate some of this. And that's really great. And Granted, we might not be able to get all the email addresses because some of these law firms might have a contact us page, but that's still something that you can look at after you've done all your email outreach. And to do the outreach, if you look at my previous video, we had a Google Sheet trigger over here, which was sending a Gmail. And within the Gmail, all we were saying was, I just want to know if you guys, there was a typo. So I just want to know if you guys are still taking new clients. I run a area AI voice agent or automation agency. Can I send a report over? So all this lead generation boils down to this email that you're about to send. And once you're done that, and let's imagine you also got a reply back from your lead. This is when you would also need to have an offer or something that you can send over. Maybe it's the voice agent or a video that you just did about a voice agent. You can send that through and get on a sales call with these guys. And if you want, you can go in and check out my previous video where I also mentioned how to use Facebook ads library, LinkedIn ads library to create your own offer based on what your competitors are doing in this space. So hopefully that was all very useful. If you did find that useful, then leave a comment on how you're using this automation to your own advantage and also subscribe to this channel and like this video as well. And until next time, I'll see you.